Welcome into the 11 Warriors Web Report. I'm Brett Hilburn, Dan Hope, Joshua Perry. Uh, Penn State week, finally. Uh, you know, we can put the Tulane week to bed, I think, for the most part. Thank goodness. Yay. Um, the, this, I think, is one of the premier matchups in the entire Big Ten, and we certainly circle it on the schedule whenever Ohio State especially makes the trip to Happy Valley. The Beaver Stadium whiteout conditions in the evening. Joshua, it's, it's one of the toughest places to play in all of, all, all of college football. Your experience there was pretty incredible, and, and it, it just has to be so incredibly difficult. It is, and it's tough for every reason. It's tough because it's a big venue. There's a lot of people. There's not very much to do in Happy Valley, so people are coming in there, and they're like, this is all they look forward to. Um, you're playing against a really good team oftentimes. you got to walk through the concourse to get down to the field. So obviously you're dealing with fans there, and then you're dealing with fans on the field. You're sitting there. You can feel the suspension of the stadium. Your parents, are their tickets are all the way at the very top. So like you, you can't even feel the support from the mm -hmm. people who came to watch you. Um, and then you got to lock in and be able to play a game. So it's tough for every reason, but it's one of the most fun places to ever play. I mean, I don't think there was a venue that I enjoyed more. Um, all the challenges that we had, some rough times when my freshman year playing there, overtime game playing there my junior year. Um, but it was it was a really cool place. The Buckeyes have a huge challenge. And it, it always seems like it's 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 one of the most impactful games when it comes to the Big Ten East, for sure, Dan. And, and it's it, everything is at stake for the Buckeyes uh, this week, in my opinion. It, it's not just a potential Big Ten championship, but it, the, the bigger goals of going to the playoff and, and potentially winning a national championship. They, they have to get a W this week to be able to accomplish all of that. Yeah, I and mean, if you look at it, the past two years, the winner of this game has gone on to win the Big Ten. And obviously it's early in the season. We've got two months to go, but we talked about it on the show today. The rest of the Big Ten isn't very strong. Mm -hmm. So if you lose this game, you have to count on Penn State losing twice to have a chance to win the Big Ten East. Those aren't – it's not a, something you want to put yourself in that position for. And – if you don't win the Big Ten East, your chances of making a playoff run, even if you just get that one loss, it's still going to hurt your chances if you don't get in that Big Ten championship game, have a chance to win the conference. So this is a very important game. In my opinion, other than Michigan, the most important game of the regular season. And we're going to have a much better idea after this week's game if this team really is a national championship caliber team. We talked, Joshua, about how this week kind of really exposes – what your strengths and weaknesses are, and especially when it talks about when, when we talk about game planning. Dwayne Haskins has been exceptional this year. He's also played in an, one game in entirety this year. He'll play all four quarters this week yes. for sure. Um, but it's another opportunity for him to kind of showcase his talents. But I don't think he should have to. I don't, I don't think he, sh he should really be forced or required to do this on his own. In my opinion, J.K. Dobbins and Mike Weber. This is a big game for them to be able to kind of take some pressure off Haskins' shoulders. Yeah, every time I talk about a road game, said it before TCU, and I'll say it again today, you need to pack your run game. And I think the key to a good run game this year is the scheme. Before it was, hey, JT, you've got the option to run. We're going to tell the running back to run to an area and make a cut. JT, if you see it, pull it, go. Now it's, hey, guys, we need to make sure that we're running to gas. We need to get our scheme going, whether we're pulling guys, um, whether we're coming cross action, whatever it is in the run game, they got to get the scheme to free the guys up. And then you got to look to see what their passing game is going to look like too because the run game and the passing game have to work together. Um, I think they'll be perfectly fine as long as those guys show up in the backfield and the coaches put them in positions to be successful. Dan, I think this is a big game for K.J. Hill. I think when the going gets tough on third down, Dwayne Haskins looks for K.J. I think he's the go-to guy in those situations. Terry McLaurin and Austin Mack, I think, are uh, kind of assets in that situation. But I think K.J. is the go-to guy on that side of the football. What do you think makes him such a kind of like a security blanket for Haskins? Well, I, I think it's his route running. I think he's the he's best. He's always open. He's the best route runner and maybe has the best, most reliable hands. And I think those are two things. It, it's that ability in the slot. And I think there's also part of it where maybe defenses don't take him quite as seriously as some of the other guys because he's not the biggest guy. He's not the fastest guy. But he's got enough of everything that he can be a dangerous guy. I said it before the TCU game. A couple people asked me, he said, who's a player to watch that we're not talking about? And I said, watch for K.J. Hill. He had a big game there. So I think we've seen it. We saw it against Michigan last year. We saw it against TCU. When the, the big game, when going gets tough and they need plays, he's usually that guy who steps up and makes a few big plays. Josh, with something close to your heart, I think on the defensive side of the football, it's the biggest game the linebackers will play uh, so far this season and maybe even the, in, throughout the entire course of the regular season. Trace McSorley is a quarterback who can throw it, can really do some damage with his legs. 
it's not quite totally assignment football, but it's really, really close. They're going to have their hands full trying to keep him contained. Yeah, especially in our scheme, we like to play a lot of man-to-man. -man. So these guys are going to have to figure out how they want to play. Do you want to have a whole player underneath freed up to just uh, follow the quarterback? And then when you look at their running game, too, Sanders can make some big yeah. plays. And so it's going to fall on the linebackers to be able to be gap sound, to be able to tackle well, to be able to stop these guys so it's not breaking through. Miles Sanders running back for the, the Penn State Nittany Lions, his best game ever in his career this past week against Illinois. Uh, ran over for over 200 yards. I think he had three touchdowns in that game as well. Was one of the best or biggest best recruits coming out of Pennsylvania. It was a big get for James Franklin, who continues to just stack recruiting class after recruiting class. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about. It, you want to talk about a night and day turnaround. It feels like James Franklin has finally built up the depth that he kind of set out. It was a goal he set out to accomplish when he first got hired at Penn State, succeeding Bill O'Brien after O'Brien took over for Paterno. You know, in my opinion, Penn State is on the cusp, if not already, into back into that top tier uh, as far as like the best teams in all of college football. A win against Ohio State would certainly be another signature win for Franklin, and, and I think would solidify them as a, as a program in that top tier. Yeah, and we and we've talked about you know Ohio State and the championship aspirations they have, but if Penn State can win this game, then they have some of those same aspirations too. I don't I don't think they're quite at the level in terms of their roster, their talent this year that Ohio State is at, but this is a team that has consistently the past couple years become one of the two best teams in the Big Ten. And we've waited for Michigan to kind of take that step up. You know, this was supposed to be a big year for Wisconsin, but you look at the past few years, Penn State has consistently been one of those top two teams, and this is just another chance for them to establish that on Saturday night. Kind of feels like there was a void to be filled, and everyone expected Jim Harbaugh and Michigan to fill that void right and in my opinion it's actually been James Franklin in Penn State especially in the last two years and, and, and really three years since he he began uh, it's I think he's done an outstanding job and, and it recruiting wise there you have to contend with them throughout the entire country now not just in that that greater pocket of Pennsylvania Maryland and, and Virginia and then into Ohio like they are recruiting uh, nationwide for sure. It's going to be an absolutely exceptional game. That whiteout atmosphere is, uh, is a thing to behold year in and year out, but it's especially good uh, when the Buckeyes are in town uh, for sure. It's, to me, it's, it's the premier game in the Big Ten outside of Ohio State, Michigan. Joshua, thank you. Dan, thank you. I'm Brett Hilprand. This has been the 11 Warriors Web Report. We'll see you next time.